Yo, what up, though? Welcome to another episode of Peak Game. It's been a minute, but your boy back. Hey, I've been busy as hell. I've been make, making a lot of t-shirts. You know, the Peak Game uh, YouTube channel went from to a Peak Game clothing brand to a Peak Game LLC. Peak Game is just off the chain right now. But anyway, I got to come back, man. I'm going to hit this topic why it's hot, why everybody talking about uh, the BMF. I just want to tell you about the the few uh the two times i actually saw and met uh big meets from bmf never met uh southwest t but um i actually well i actually saw big meets for the first time then i met him the second time so let's go back this goes back to atlanta i say this had to be 2003 maybe 2004 I was living in Atlanta. I was back and forth from Atlanta to Michigan. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we had the crib and we had a crib in Atlanta. Uh, I was doing the, the club thing and uh, I had a club. I was running Club Fuel in Atlanta on Wednesday nights. I called it Jersey's Night. This is when jerseys, throwback jerseys and throwback jersey dresses and shit was in style. Everybody was rocking those or whatever. So I had Jersey nights on uh, Wednesday nights. Um, in Atlanta at Club Fuel. If anybody know about Club Fuel back in the day, this is like in the heart of uh, a Buckhead. So uh, anyway, I had that on Wednesday night. So that's what I was doing. But I'm gonna go back to the first time uh, I actually saw Big Mitch. But when we first moved, well, it went, we didn't, we moved, I actually moved to Atlanta in 1998 to 2000. And I moved back to Michigan and then I end up moving back to Atlanta in 2001 and stayed there from 2001 till 2005 all right so matter of fact you know what I'm saying uh it's not no secret on my past you know I used to be doing my thing you know we you know we was hustling we you know uh moving a lot of a lot of motherfucking dope back then you know what I'm saying so, you know, I don't try to glamorize that shit, but, you know, it is what it is. That's what I was doing back in the day. Uh, anyway, that's why I was back and forth to Atlanta. You know, I had people moving my shit in Michigan, and uh, I would go to Atlanta to, you know, to flex out. And it was kind of crazy because after watching the BMF show and seeing this story, it kind of it's not like the same story as theirs, but we kind of went to Atlanta to get away from the Michigan bullshit. It kind of how, how me end up getting to Atlanta, just trying to get away from the shit that was stupid shit that was going on in michigan but uh but we moved to atlanta it was me and two of my friends my homie sharky he ended up uh catching the case uh nigga set him up for two bricks and he ended up doing fair time but we had but well, we had went down to the actually we had went to michigan we went to atlanta looking for the crib me my nigga shark my nigga oh we went to michigan uh atlanta found the crib and i remember when we was in uh atlanta this nigga he was fucking with, uh, with, uh, somebody called him, was like, yo, this one nigga named Mar, uh, got caught up. He was at high speed chase and got caught with like nine O's of, uh, of hard, uh, high speed chase with the police, whatever. And this was the nigga that my homie was fucking with. So we in Atlanta, we get the call, like, like, damn, my man's and got hemmed up and shit. He all, you know, this shit all on the news because he didn't crashed out while they chasing him and shit. So while we in Atlanta, I'm telling my nigga shot, man, don't, don't don't fuck with that nigga, bro. Like, uh, I wouldn't fuck with that nigga, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, long story short, he ended up coming back. We after we was down, we found the crib where we was gonna move at. Uh it was in Douglasville, well, kind of like the west of Atlanta, like outside outskirts of Atlanta. It was in Douglasville, nice little crib. We got it for, you know, the farther you go out, the better, bigger the house you get for your money. So anyway, we had a, got the crib in Douglasville, like a, a five bedroom crib, real nice. Um, it was three of us. So you know, when we come back, uh, the nigga was trying to hit my homie up and shit, and uh, trying to get him to fuck with him because he had got out of jail. And my nigga was like, man, the nigga keep calling me. Anyway, long story short, my nigga Shark ain't no fuck with the nigga. The nigga called him for two breaks. and my nigga was like, he, you know, he was kind of you know leery of the nigga, but he, I guess he. He fucked with the nigga for so long. Plus, this nigga was who set him up was known as a as a shooter, as a killer. He had he had a couple of bodies that shot him, had, had like respect in the hood. Niggas would never thought that he would 
snitch. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, the nigga snitched on my homie. So my homie ended up uh the snitch caught him uh, uh set him up with two bricks. Uh, my homie, like he said, he felt the shit, so he only took one. Which really didn't make sense. I I I wish she just would have just wrapped up a book in some motherfucking tape, duct tape, and took it just to see if this nigga was on some bullshit or not. Fake like he was actually doing some shit, but but it is what it is, you know. You know, you know, what's you know, well, meant to be, you can't stop it. So so let's get back to the uh so I was just telling that story because he ain't up going in the crib, but he ended up getting locked up, so we end up me and my other homie just end up keeping the crib. We later on brought in my homie Red Ace. He came in and took my homie Sharky spot because he got locked up because the nigga set him up for two bricks. So anyway, let's go back to uh the big meat thing. Uh so when I'm in um Atlanta hanging out, you know, I used to hang out all the time. Niggas know how I did. We used to go from spot to spot, you know, hang out. We probably hit about four or five different clubs in one night. This particular night, uh I think I'm by myself this night. I go to Strokers. I go to the Strokers Strip Club, and I'm in there and shit. Uh, I can do I? I can't remember what I had on. Well, I mean, I, whatever it was, I was fresh to the motherfucker. Had my jewelry on, and was just nice little stripper chick, man. She was thicker than a motherfucker, pretty ass face and shit. And uh, she came over and shit. I got a lap dance from her. I think I made got. A, I didn't even spend a lot of money with. I was just we were just talking. And she kind of took a liking to me and shit. She was like, she was like, take your number, take my number down. You know, she was saying she was from St. Louis and all this type of shit, whatever. I'm like, cool. And then she was, she was like, yeah, um, you you know Chingy? You heard Chingy? I'm like, yeah, I know. I heard Chingy. She was like, that's my cousin. I'm like, oh, where? That's what's up. You know, I'm like, you know, who gives a fuck? You know, but you know, the bitch bad. You know, I'm really, I'm looking at this bitch like a bitch. I'm trying to fuck. Like, what's the fuck with Chingy? But she keep telling me about herself. She's like, uh, I'm in that uh right there video. I'm in that little little small little spot. You know and I'm saying you gotta check me out. I'm in the video. So anyway, yeah, I went and checked her out. So I seen her in the video anyway. So. We link up and I'm like, come on, let's go out to eat. So I stayed in Midtown on Ralph McGill Boulevard, right down the street from Georgia Power. I stayed in McGill's place. So if you know anything about Atlanta, you know, well, Ralph McGill Boulevard, then there's McGill's place. And then right behind McGill's place is University Drive, which is the fucking hood. But uh, I was in between Midtown and you go one block, it's the hood. But I was staying in these very nice condominiums, but the hood was right there, not a block over. But anyway, so she come to my crib. She meeting me in my crib. Matter of fact, I don't know if Jeezy stayed there, but I know I used to see promo vehicles with Jeezy face all like, At that time, I didn't know who the fuck Jeezy was. I just always used to see his face plastered on on like uh, vehicles and shit, you know, like, uh, vans and shit wrapped with him on there and shit. So... So she come to my crib, boom, uh, I'm like, come on, let's go to Justin's. So we go to Justin's to eat. That's what I'm taking her on a date to Justin's. So when we get to Justin's, um, and we sit down to eat. When we pull up, it's just the parking lot just full of fucking rides and shit, cars and, you know, uh, H2 Hummers, Benzes, uh, this, any kind of car you could think of, like the parking lot is stupid packed. I'm like, God damn, what, what the fuck is going on here, right? This car is there, but they parked all in the middle of the parking lot, like out on the grass, on the curb, all kind of shit. So we go in there, we get us a table. And I know it's just a whole bunch of niggas, and all of them got on white t shirts, big ass white t shirts. You know, that was back in the day, niggas wear them big ass, oversized white t shirts and shit. And. And I'm looking at their shirts. You know, at the time, you know, I'm in the game. I'm doing my thing. I'm I'm, I'm moving a few bricks in, here and there. So I'm, I'm feeling like I'm the shit, too. You know what I'm saying? And plus, I got this badass bitch from St. Louis who dances strokers. So I'm in there. And we get our table. We sit down and shit. And I'm seeing these niggas, a whole bunch of them. They just everywhere, right? And they got on these shirts. And on the front of their shirts, it say, I got it for cheap. I'm looking at these niggas like, <laughs> like these niggas got on a shirt to say I got it for cheap. I'm like, well, is these niggas is this the name of an album or the name of a mixtape or are they what they promoting? I, I hope they not promoting that they selling dope, cause these niggas had on a shirt that said I got it for cheap. 
I'm like, what the fuck? So it's kind of like, I'm looking at it like, okay, these niggas must be some rappers or something. So at the time, I had never even heard of Big Meat. Now, I'm from Michigan. I am fuck with Detroit. Never heard of the nigga, right? So the first time I seen him, I honestly thought this nigga was a uh, little flip. Because he had the braids, light-skinned it. He was iced up, jewelry on and shit. So I'm, I'm thinking, like, I knew these niggas had to be some rappers or something. Because how they was, you know, that's how they moved. Like, I was like, this must be some rappers or some shit. And I see, I said, oh, okay, this must, that's a little flip. So I'm thinking this little flip and his little entourage. I'm thinking this little flip, not knowing it's Big Meat, but it's Big Meat. Because I had never, you know, never seen Lil Flip in person. I just thought he looked at, like Lil Flip to me. So I was like, damn, oh, that's... Let's be a little flip. So, you know, pay no mind. You know, we ate our food, whatever. You know, went back to the crib, whatever. That was the first time I met him. It was, like I said, it was just at Justin's. They kind of just took over that motherfucker place. If they was around there running Justin like like they own that motherfucker. And, you know, if anybody know, that's Puffy's Puffy's restaurant. But you would have thought they own that motherfucker. I, I, I might even seen them niggas walking in and out of the kitchen grabbing their own food and shit. Like, they literally was running that motherfucker. So, yeah, that was the first time I seen it. On the second time, like I told you, I was running Club Fuel on Wednesday nights. Uh, I had that night. Uh, I got plugged through. Actually, I got plugged uh, with Jada Kiss, uh, Banager, uh Hit Hard. He was fucking with this chick in Atlanta. And uh, and she told him she needed somebody to come in with her with this club night um, at Club Fuel. So he knew I was in and out. And he was like, Duke, you want to get this uh, spot in um, Bank uh, uh, in Buckhead? I'm like, uh, yeah, hell yeah, I'll do that shit. So, you know, all right, we ain't up talking to Jersey nights, whatever. So one day we at the club, you know, we getting this shit started. We got airplay. We got uh, some Falcon players on it, you know, because it's Jersey night, you know. You know, we give them away money for the best jersey dress, the best, you know, jerseys and shit like that. So one night in there, we're getting it popping. It's got nice crowds getting packed. And, uh, you know, and we stayed open to four o'clock. Usually we didn't get all crowd until two o'clock because people would come there. After they leave other spots that close at two. But we stay open to four. So they come up. Uh, um, she come up. Uh, we, we in the club. We in the bar. I'm at the door. And I remember, uh, so Big Mishnam, they come to the club. This night, I had uh, Jada Kiss at the club, and I had Fabulous at the club. It, we, it was a Jada Kiss night, but we ended up bumping into Fabulous at this at a clothing store. And I already dealt with Fabulous. Matter of fact, we bumped into Fabulous the night before at Club Chaos. And I was with Kiss them, and we was telling Fabulous. I went up to Fab and told him, like, yo, Fab, uh, because I had just had him at the crib. I did a show with him at the crib. And I told, told him who I was. He remembered me and whatever. I said, man, I got a show tomorrow with Kiss at Club Fuel. If y'all ain't doing shit, come through, man. I said, I'll make sure I get y'all a section and a couple bottles. He was like, cool, cool, cool. So I didn't expect him to come by. I thought he was just saying whatever just to get me out of his face, whatever, you know. But uh, but the nigga came through. Jada came through. Matter of fact, Lil C's popped up. Uh, so it was it was kind of star studded and shit. So I'm, I'm at the door, it's getting crowded, and then all of a sudden, man, about a hundred niggas come to the door. Like he's all I forgot what shit they had on this time, but it's hundred niggas and they just walking through this motherfucker. I'm like, hold on, wait, hold on. I, I had to stop these because these niggas just walking through, ain't paying a shit. I'm like, hold on, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, nigga. And uh, and the chick who I was doing the shit with, she like, um. That's Meech and them. Um, that, that's Big Meech. I said, who? Yeah, that's Big Meech. That's BMF. The Black Mafia family. I said, the Black Mafia? I said, I, said, I don't give a fuck who they is. Everybody pay, right? So he like, at the time, we charging $20 a head. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know if it was 100 niggas. It, it, it might, it, I don't think it was 100 niggas, but it was close. So um, I don't know how many niggas it was. But it was a lot of motherfuckers, right? So I'm stopping and I guess, you know, Meech see me like telling everybody, hold on, man, what the fuck y'all doing? So Meech come up like, well, what's the problem? I said, man, hold on, man. Hold on, man. Oh, he, he said, I said, man, all y'all motherfuckers can't get in here free, man. It, it costs to get in here. Then, uh, 
And the chick like, that's Meech. I'm like, man, I don't give a fuck who he is. Everybody got to pay. So the nigga Meech coming to me was like, man, how much is it? I said, man, that's $20 here. But I'll give y'all a deal since so many of y'all. Just give me $10 a head. I'll give it half off since so many of you motherfuckers. So this nigga pulling. Pull, matter of fact, he didn't even pull out. He had the money already in his hand. The nigga pulled the money out and started counting. Um. All hundreds. The nigga counted out about 2,500 in hundreds and gave it to me. It was more than what I was what I was finna charge him for. And um it was more than what I was charging for the niggas. Cause I told the nigga ten dollars, but the nigga gave me twenty five hundred dollars at the door for these niggas that was with him. And when he gave me the money, I looked at this nigga. I said, Oh, this this nigga somebody. I said, you know what, man? Y'all don't never get every time you next time you come through here, you don't never gotta pay again. And the nigga dapped me up and went in. And them niggas bought the fucking bar out. Everybody in there was drinking. They bought the bar, they bought all the champagne, all the champagne from the from the bar. And then they bought bought the bar out. So everybody who was there got to drink free all fucking night. Epic fucking night. I think that was the most money I had ever made that night at that club. I think I might have walked. Cause I, I was get I would get the door and I got uh 15% of the of the bar. I think I might have cleared about I'm trying to think how much, man. Cause I, I always had a lot of good nights. But I wanna say I cleared maybe about ten thousand at the door, and then I got fifteen percent of the bar, and I cleared another four for four grand. So, but I, I walked away about fifteen thousand that night, and that was and that was just at the you know I didn't even spend no one thing I spent money on was running some radio ads and maybe some flyers and posters. Total investment in that was maybe a thousand dollars so i invested a thousand and walked away with fifteen thousand so yeah man it was epic night man epic shit so uh shout out to big meech in that night like i said uh we was doing our thing uh we was, i know actually i'm i now i think about it i people used to think because we were from michigan we came with our ride we had h2 hummers with the big 24 rims spinning and we had the Michigan plates on them. And I remember pulling up to some lot where and some chicks was like looking at us, you know, saying like, you know, we 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 looked apart. We you know we, we iced up, we, we fly them motherfucker. And I mean, she was like, she was like, Y'all BMF? And like I said at that time, we I didn't know who the fuck BMF was. Like, who the fuck is been nah, nah, we know. Like, I see y'all y'all from Michigan, ain't y'all? I'm like, yeah, she said. Well, y'all got the Michigan place. You know, I thought y'all was BMF. I'm like, nah, baby. We ain't no motherfucking BMF. We, we ain't had no title. You know what I'm saying? We, we came to Atlanta just to, you know, we couldn't floss like we wanted to at the crib because we was from Flint. Like, we couldn't we couldn't show out like that. You know, we would stick out like sore thumbs. But in Atlanta, we blended in. We could do our thing in Atlanta. We could floss and wear our jewelry and drive our nice fancy cars and shit. You know, and, and, and enjoy our money without being watched, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, that's you know, just my story on me. Like I said, I don't I didn't know him personally, but those are the two occasions I ran up on. So like so you know I'm I'm gonna hurry up finish this up, but you know, like, subscribe and share and uh you know check your boy out, man. Peep game, man. Always peep game, man. Shout out to BMF, shout out to the crew, shout out to everybody, man, shout out to the ATL, man. Peace.